Okay, guys, we've got two different modified 305s. They both make the same power, but when we ran them stock, one of them ran Tuneport, one of them ran a Quadrajet, and they made dramatically different power. My question is why? Hello, everybody. I'm Richard Holder, and today we're looking at 305 small block Chevys, kind of the other guys' small block. I know all the 350 guys, yeah, just replace it with the 350, but we're not doing that. We're going to see how we modify a 305 and make more power. But more importantly, I want you guys to help me. But before we do that, please welcome to the channel. I want you guys to help me and let me know what you think happened in our comparison between two different motors that ended up making the same power once they were modified, but didn't make the same power when we started out in stock trim. Confused? You won't be. Let's check it out. Okay, guys, let's jump right in. We're going to take a look at two different tests I ran, both of them on 305 motors. And I know what you're thinking. At least I, let, I know what most of the small block Chevy guys are thinking. Well, the best thing that you could do with a 305 is just throw it in the scrap heap or use it as a boat anchor or all the other 5 liter 305 comments that we get and just put a 350 in. And that's obviously an option. You can go to the wrecking yard, get a 350 like an L31 Vortec motor that's 350 cubic inches, put it in. 350 cubic inches is going to make more power than 305 cubic inches. The other benefit with the 350 is it's a bigger bore. So you have more cylinder head choices than you do on the smaller bore, bore 305. But let's take a look at some combinations that were run on the 305 because there's lots and lots of 305s out there and lots and lots of guys that just want to modify their 305 and not necessarily replace it with something bigger. Although, please note, <laughs> having a 350 option from the wrecking yard is a pretty inexpensive way to go. But this is for all the 305 guys let's stay 305 cubic inches and what we're going to do is take a look at two different combinations that i ran both starting with 305s and we ended up making about the same power once we did all the modifications to the 305 so the interesting thing really is not that so much it's more our starting point and this is test motor number one this was actually a tune port setup a tune port 305 that i used way back and i did a story for the guys at carcraft magazine we were comparing the van 80s, late 80s, early 90s versions of these motors, comparing the 5 liter Ford to the 5 liter Chevy. So we started out with a tune port LB9 305, and we ran it basically in stock trim. Now we did run it with long tube headers, we ran it with no accessories, we had an optimized tune on it with no air inlet system and you know a, a good exhaust. So with the headers and an open exhaust, no accessories, no air inlet, and an optimized tune, and we also run a little bit colder, naturally it made more power than its rated number, anywhere from 205 to 215 horsepower, depending on which year and configuration you got this thing in. But when this thing was run on the engine dyno in, in the configuration that I mentioned, the tune port 305 actually made 267 horsepower and 333 foot-pounds of torque. So you can see it did very well. It did kind of what we've come to expect from at least from the 302 Ford versions of these motors, which made almost near identical kind of power. But it did very well. And this thing, actually, I shouldn't ever have taken it apart because it might have been the lowest <laughs> actual original small block through a tune port 305 in existence. Because I think what this motor was, it came to us from the Chevy Ray Shop. I think that this came off the assembly line, went to the Chevy Ray Shop. I think that they started it and ran it on the dyno. They didn't do any modifications in it. The thing was completely stock. So they may not have run it at all. And then we ran it and I took it all apart and changed everything. <laughs> So I probably shouldn't have done that, but it turned out to be a really good motor. So we're looking at uh, in non-modified form, except for the headers, 267 horsepower, 333 foot-pounds of torque. But now let's take a look and see what happened when we made modifications to this combination. You can see we picked up a lot of power. So we'll talk about the peaks first of all, 361 horsepower after our modifications and 350 foot pounds, 349.7. And what we did was we basically changed the top end of this motor, although we also changed the camshaft. So let's take a look at our test description here. We added a, a different camshaft to start out with. We replaced the factory cam with a 268 XFI cam from Comp Cams. It was a 570-565 lift split. 
a 218-224 degree duration split, and a 113 degree lobe separation angle. We also installed a set of TFS Super 23 175 heads, 175cc intake ports, 67cc exhaust ports, 56cc combustion chambers. They had a 194-150 valve. Uh, valve combination. We had springs on it because this was a factory hydraulic roller. We replaced the tune port system with a simple carbureted setup. We had an Edelbrock RPM air gap, a 650 XP carburetor, and an MSD distributor. So it basically changed our tune port motor into a carbureted version, and it did very well. It made good power. The combination of the carbureted induction system, good flowing cylinder heads, obviously much better than the tune port heads, and then a decent sized camshaft that fit available piston to valve clearance. We made good power. So we jumped up from 267 up to 361, nearly 100 horsepower. Peak torque, well, very good with the tune port motor, 333 up to 350 foot pounds. So now let's take a look at combination number two, where we did a very similar deal. We started off with a kind of a stock combination and then modified it with heads, cam, and intake. Okay, guys, here's some interesting results. I want you guys to take a look and please make a comment. Let me know what you think happened here, and I'll tell you what I'm talking about. We had another 305 tune port combination, and we started out with a baseline. Then we did heads, cam, and intake manifold. We started this one out a little bit different, though. We took the tune port stuff off, and we put a, started out with a carbureted induction system. So it's a tune port, long block, you know, heads, cam, short block. The only thing we did was change, took the tune port off, and we put a cast iron quadrajet four barrel man manifold on it that we've run many, many times and lots of other things. And we ran a new quadrajet. This one was from Sean Murphy. We put a distributor in this thing and ran it in this manner, but otherwise it was basically a stock tune port 305. And the thing that's interesting here is the power output that it made in carbureted form. It only made 224 horsepower and 310 foot-pounds of torque, which is way down, I'm going to show you in just a second, which is way down from our baseline starting point with the tune port motor for, on the other combination. Now, the interesting thing is this. Once we modified it, it basically did the same thing as the other one did. I'm going to go ahead and move myself here. Once we put a set of cylinder heads on here. We put the same kind of trick flow uh, Super 23 heads on there. We put a comparable cam, an XR270 camshaft in it. We had headers on it. We put a, a carbureted intake manifold on it, uh, a dual plane, you know, RPM air gap style intake manifold with, with a holly on it. And it ended up making near identical power to the other combination. It was 361.7 and 300 and just a little bit more torque, 353 foot pounds of torque. My question is, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and overlay something for you so you can see. Move myself down here. So this is our second modified combination. This is our first modified combination. We see a little bit of a difference in torque there owing to the two different kind of camshafts. I'll go ahead and put that 270 cam that we ran on the second combination up and you can kind of see. But my point is that the modified version, both of them are making 360 plus horsepower and 350 foot pounds of torque. But here's what I wanted you to look at. Look at the difference in power between our stock combinations. So this is our Q-Jet combination both 305s, and this is our tune port combination. So this is exactly the same long block, and they ended up making the same power once they were modified. So we know that there's nothing wrong with the long block. So we see a difference of a different induction system. One of them has the 305 tune port set up. The other one has a quadrajet cast iron intake manifold, which we know we've made way more power than this with the quadrajet setup. So we know that it works. The other things that we know, and I want you guys to let me know in the comments, what do you think happened here? Why is there a difference between these two motors of 225 horsepower and 267 foot-pounds of torque. Why is there a 40 horsepower difference? Now, here's something to think about. We know back in the day, the LB9 tune port 305 versus the L69 carbureted HO version, 190 versus 215 horsepower. That's about 25 horsepower. Let's say that their ratings were accurate and both of those actually made that kind of power. We do see a difference between those two induction systems. But what do you guys think? Why is there a big difference here? Let me tell you the things that we check so that you know when you make the comments, you can you can get rid of those comments. First of all, we did a compression test. All of the compression was good on all the cylinders. There were no broken springs. There, all of the rockers were checked. 
and again, it made the same power after it was modified. There were no bad spark plugs or no bad plug wires. Um, everything seemed like it was working on this combination. We made sure that the quadrajet, both the primaries and the secondaries were opening all the way. We had fuel pressure. You know, we had all of the things. And like I said, we didn't change the, the plugs or the wires or anything on there. And when we installed the new intake manifold and, and new camshaft and all that stuff, all of this stuff worked out great. It just made the power that it's supposed to. But when we ran, and I didn't go back and run this thing in, in this baseline stock trim again to find out if there was a problem. But we started out so much lower, 225 horsepower, and torque was way down. You could see um, torque between the two combinations, 308 or 9 foot-pounds versus 333 foot-pounds. That's a big change in power between the two induction systems. So here you go. Let me know. What do you guys think? What caused this difference in power? Does a quadrajet combination actually make that much less power than a tune port setup? We haven't seen that really in the past when we've done carburation versus tune port stuff. Maybe less torque, but certainly not less power. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. I'm curious what you guys think actually happened, but <laughs> this is what happened. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.